on our back, uh, especially after being voted first in the preseason polls for the Big Ten and fourth overall in the country. Um, you know, we're not going to sneak up on anybody this year. Uh, we shouldn't be after coming off of a historic year last year, uh, winning both the conference tournament and the regular season title. But we have every reason to have high expectations for this season. We start the best point guard in the nation in Caitlin Clark. Uh, just uh, last year was note, uh, voted the Dawn Staley Guard of the Year and the Nancy Lieberman Guard of the Year. You've seen the nation's respect. I mean, this, uh, this past week she was named preseason player of the year for the Big Ten. Uh, AP All-American, unanimous, and to get anybody to agree unanimously on anything these days is almost impossible. Uh, but everybody knows that she led the country in points last year at 27 points a game, but sometimes people forget she also led the country in assists at eight per game. Uh, we return Monica Sinano, uh, preseason All-Big Ten, for the second straight year, and should be after leading the country at 68% uh, field goal shooting. Uh, today she was named uh, to the Lisa Leslie watch list, and I really believe that Caitlin and Monica are one of the most dynamic duos in the country. Um, all of our starters returned from last year. McKenna Warnock, uh, the third leading scorer on our team, the second most effective three-point shooter, the second best rebounder on our team, uh, Gabby Marshall, another three-point weapon, uh, led our team in steals last year as well. And then Kate Martin is, like I said before, is the glue of our team. She's a strong leader. She's a culture builder. She's somebody you want in the locker room. Uh, Kate will fill any role that we ask her. We also return a lot of sophomores. Addie O'Grady, Sydney Alfarder, A.J. Ediger, uh, all returning for their sophomore years. And then we also bring in the addition of or, or get back the services of Sharon Goodman and Shatia Wettering, who both suffered ACL injuries last year. Unfortunately, we did lose Kylie Fearbach during the summer uh, to that same injury, and so she will not uh, uh, be suiting up for the Hawks this year. We have additions to our team also, uh, with Central Michigan transfer Molly Davis, led her team in scoring last year, and she ranks first in Central Michigan history with a 17.7 17 .7 point per game average. Molly's going to give us a lot of depth at the point guard and off guard positions, and we'll see uh, significant playing time. We also have freshman Hannah Stalky coming in from Cedar Rapids, Washington. Hannah was the Gatorade Player of the Year for the state and is doing a really, really good job for us on the floor. Taylor McCabe also joins us, Nebraska's Gatorade Player of the Year. Uh, leads the uh, Nebraska high school program as the best three-point shooter ever in that state. And then we also bring in Jada Gimphy from state championship Johnston, uh, Iowa, who she was named all tournament and all state last year as well. So offensively, you know, I always like talking about offense. Um, last year, we ranked number one in the country in points in field goal percentage, number one in the country in free throw percentage, second in scoring, th uh, third in assists, and our defense made a big jump. So, yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit, too. But, um, you know, we needed to make a big jump last year, and uh, we did. And it's still a point of emphasis right now. But we have a tremendous schedule this year. Six teams in the Big Ten are ranked in the top 25 poll. That's the most ever, and it's the most of any conference in the country. So it's you know, it's easy to say that we have, are playing in the most difficult women's basketball conference in America. Uh, 16, um, we also have a non-conference schedule that is pretty amazing. We are hosting Iowa State, ranked 8th in the polls, North Carolina State, who's ranked 10th in the polls, Belmont, who's receiving votes in the national polls. Uh, we travel to Kansas State, who's also receiving votes in the polls. And we've been invited to the prestigious Phil Knight Tournament in Portland for Thanksgiving, where we'll play Oregon State in the first round and then either Duke or number six, UConn, in the second round. So uh, again, this is an amazing schedule. Ten teams on our schedule right now rank in the top 25 in the country. Um, the nation's paying attention. You know, 18 of our 29 games this year are going to be held on national television. We've doubled our season ticket sales from last year. And after three straight Carver Hawkeye Arena sellouts, our team is ready to play and get back into Carver.
I'm sure you have some questions. Have you ever had all five starters back three years in a row? I doubt it. Uh, I don't know for sure, Don, but I doubt that's, uh, that's happened. What's that mean? Is that easier when you add some stuff that they already know the basics and then if you want to flex your defense or do another offense and stuff? You know, it does make it easier because um, they can help kind of coach the younger, the younger classmen. Um, so I think it's, it's always important we have veterans that they continue to, to foster the culture of your program. Um, and that's what these guys are doing. But certainly, I, I don't have to have as many repetitions with them. Uh, I can save their legs a little bit, uh, you know, especially somebody like Monica, who you know, runs up and down you know, the whole length of the floor, not just three-point line to three-point line. So it's nice to be able to give those guys a little bit more um, of a rest. When you have an elite player, you see elite player on teams sometimes, and they're all about the player, they're not about the team, but you have a team that is a team. How does it, why does that happen? I think it's recruiting the right type of people. Um, I, I agree with you. I think we have some superstars on this team, and Caitlin, I don't think, is the only one. Uh, but certainly, Caitlin is a superstar. Monica is in her own right. And we have really good players surrounding them that um, I, I think Caitlin, the way she handles herself, allows that. Everybody sees that she's the hardest worker. Everybody sees all the extra time that she puts in. Uh, she's a great teammate as far as crediting her teammates, you know, with, with success and building them up all the time. So I think part of that is due to Caitlin, and I think it's part of it is the culture of our program and that we really stress that everyone is important on our team. Everyone matters. Uh, it is one of our values, and when you walk into our locker room, you see it on the wall. They see it every single day when they walk in, and we talk about it almost every day, that everyone in our circle is just as important as the, as the next person. Did you worry when she came in that... Is this going to work? Is that going to happen? What happened? Was there a concern there that the pieces were all going to go together? You know, I think um, you never know for sure how a freshman is going to blend in with a, with a team. So you're never completely sure. But we knew how competitive that Caitlin was in high school. And sometimes that's all a person sees. You don't get to know a person as well as we do, like talking to them on the phone and having visits with them and really having some deep conversations. And so I don't know that you know everybody gets to see that part of Caitlin that we do and understand. She understands that she needs everybody else to get work to where she wants to. And uh, that helps a lot. For all the positivity around the program right now, um, I'd say everybody can agree that last year didn't end the way that you guys wanted it to. But how do you feel that little bit of disappointment kind of permeated the off season and blended with all the the positive talk um, and, and kind of served as that motivation, you know, amid every everything else that's come? Yeah, Darg, and I think that. Um you know, last year, yeah, it was really crushing at the end. And it just is a great reminder to everybody that every possession counts. One basket counts. One rebound counts. One turnover counts because that's all it really came down to. Um, and we lost to a really good team that advanced to the Elite Eight. Uh, but um, it has definitely been a very good driving motivator for our team. Uh, you know, we talk about it a lot. We talk about it almost daily um, we're bringing up examples from that game or um, that you know we fell short because I think if you don't do that you're not using an opportunity to really motivate your athletes and kind of fuel the fire a little bit for them now we don't want to focus on it so much that it's all that they see we certainly want to celebrate the Big Ten championship and the Big Ten tournament and those type of things as well because if you focus just on a loss you know that's a little depressing right and who wants to come to practice then so we really try to use it more as a fuel for fire than um, anything else Coach, how far back has, has Sharon come, and who is probably the most likely back up to Monica in the post? That's a good question, Jeff. I feel like um, right now um, <laughs> it's a big question mark, to be quite honest. Uh, we're not there yet. We're not there to dis, uh, say that this person is a backup to Monica. Um, it's still a tight race, and um, right now, you know, Sharon is competing for that time, uh, but also A.J. Ediger. Also, Addison O'Grady, um, and we've been messing around with Hannah Stalky at that position a little bit as well. Uh, so we have a lot of options, um, and nobody has risen to the top as the clear-cut uh, second in our depth chart at the center position. So Sharon is um, coming along. Um, I think 
we're going to see a lot more progress out of her in the next month. And uh, I'm a little looking forward to it. We really held her out of most of the summer activities. Um, it, but I don't know that did her any favors right now. Uh, I think she still has a little ways to go where she feels confident on the floor. Have you guys played around with the idea of having Monica and Addison on the floor at the same time, or Monica and Hannah? So that way you, have, you, you still have the scoring threat in Monica, but maybe a boost in rebounding? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we've uh, worked on both of those options with Addie at the four or the five and Hannah at the four or five along with Monica. So, yeah, we've worked on both of those options. Where does Hannah fit? I mean, she, in high school, she did everything, even brought the ball up the court for a wash. We we'll won't have her do that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that. Yeah, yeah, we don't need that. Hannah does a lot of really th things really well. Um, but no, I'm not going to have her at point guard or, or ball handling guard. But she, I'm, I'm telling you, she has been really impressive in practice. Um, you just never know how quickly a freshman is going to adapt to the college game and get that confidence to play at this level. And she's getting there. And it's really fun to watch. It's fun to watch her development and her confidence grow. Um, she will definitely add to our rebounding, uh, which we needed. And she is, uh, her ability to attack off the dribble is really good. Um, her ability to post up is good. Um, and her three-point shot is, is looking a lot better as well. So I, I'm, I'm extremely excited about Hannah. Does she have a, a natural position, or is she just one of those positionless players you, you love to have? Yeah, and that's what we kind of look for when we're recruiting is those players that can play a multitude of positions. And Hannah can certainly do that. She could play really for us the, the three, four, or five. We're going to kind of keep her at the four and five this year right. as a freshman because uh, our transition offense is quite different between our threes and our, our one, two, threes and our four, fives. Given all of the excitement and anticipation coming into the season based off the success that you all had last season, obviously the players, the core group that is returning, uh, understands what it means to live through that kind of pressure. What has been your message to some of the newcomers about playing under pressure? Yeah, they don't have any idea yet. I mean, right, you're coming from high school to college and everything is different. The court's longer, it's more physical. I mean, it, it's such a rude awakening for freshmen, you know, that first game. And uh, I'll be glad, you know, when we get, we have an exhibition game that's open to the public, so they'll get an opportunity to see what it's like with a buzz in Carver Hawkeye Arena, not just a quiet Carver Hawkeye Arena during practice. Um, you know, I, I would hope that our freshmen don't feel as much pressure as our upperclassmen, you know, because they are freshmen, right? I mean, they shouldn't. They should be coming in here to learn, to grow, and they shouldn't have that much pressure. Now, my upperclassmen, they are the ones that should have pressure on them. Um, and like I said at Big Ten Media Day, you know, Billy Jean King told me that one time, you know, pressure is a privilege, and, and that's what we are trying to use. Uh, she actually wrote that out on a piece of paper and signed it for me, and uh, we have it framed in our locker room. Um, it's something I want my players to see, you know, this is what you work for is to be ranked high in the country. Um, does it bring pressure? Yes. But man, you worked hard for it, so you better enjoy it too. Along those same lines, this, the nucleus of this team has been through a lot the last two seasons with, you know, high expectations and a lot of spotlight on them. But this year kind of even more so, how equipped do you feel like the, the leaders of this team are to handle, you know, being one of college basketball's top most talked about teams for you know what you guys hope is the whole season I mean I think we have tremendous leadership and our, our captains this year are the same as they were last year which is Monica Kate and McKenna um, you know Caitlin is a leader in her own right just because she's got the ball in her hands all the time and she's really the face kind of of our program so she's a leader in her own right there and, and the way she works you know people want to emulate that um, I think we have tremendous leadership on our team and I think that experience will help them get through a lot of, you know, those pressure type of situations. When you brought Monica in here, she was obviously coming in a position that we had National Player of the Year, but did you see what she's produced or did you hope she could do that or were you quite confident she could do what she's done? Oh, no. Uh, Monica's freshman year was, uh, uh, wow. I, I mean, I can't believe how she's come from her freshman year to her sophomore, junior, senior year, and now her fifth year. You know, when Monica came in here as a freshman, she had no idea how good she could be. And she's, you know, looking at Megan, who's, you know, all everything. And uh, 
All she did that year was she learned. She learned how to work. She learned how to be positive like Megan. She learned, you know, Coach Jensen and, and how, you know, she wants to demand things in practice. Um, she just was a sponge that first year, and she really had a messed up shot, to be quite honest, her freshman year. And between her freshman and sophomore years, uh, we got in the gym, and we went back to soft touch shooting, and we went back, and we completely changed her style of shooting. She did the hard work then. We gave her the opportunity. We gave her the education. It was up to her to make it work, and she did. She was in the gym all the time doing one-handed shooting, two-hand soft touch shooting, um, doing the things that required for her to straighten out her shot. And boy, did she ever straighten it out. You know, shooting 68% from the field is amazing. What kind of production do you need from McKenna and Gabby? Yeah, Susan, I think that's a... That, that's a key for us, right? Everybody knows about the two, and so what are we going to get out of the other three, and what are we going to get off the bench? That's what's going to take us farther. Um, you know, you look at where you can get more production than you did last year. Can we get more from Monica? I don't know. Can we get more from Caitlin? I don't know. That's pretty hard. But, yeah, I think we can get more from the, other, the others. And when you have people that are really lethal from three-point range, like McKenna is and like Gabby is, um, it makes – the other two, Monica and Caitlin's job, so much easier because they cannot just focus on those two. The minute you focus on those two, we got somebody else that's going to knock it down. So uh, I definitely think, you know, McKenna can also help us um, in, in rebounding. I think that's an area that she can, she can get better at uh, this year. I think the initial thought when, when you brought in Molly Davis was that she was going to be back up to Caitlin. It sounds like she's going to have a bigger role than that. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of do you expect to see out of her this year? Yeah, I've been very happy with Molly. Um, we did recruit her as the backup to Caitlin. Okay, now think about how hard that is. Uh, you are all everything for Central Michigan. You competed against Iowa uh, in the NCAA tournament and had 18 points on us. Uh, and then you transfer here knowing that you're going to back up the point guard. Go from playing 35 minutes a game to, you know, backing up, you know, maybe eight minutes a game. So we told her right up front, this is your number one role, but you're also going to compete for off-guard minutes. And that is, um, I've been impressed with how well she plays away from the basketball. She's crafty. Um, she's deceiving. She's really a smart basketball player. And so I'm uh, very, very excited. I think that's going to be an X factor that people haven't figured out with our team yet. The chemistry of this team has obviously been talked about a lot over the last few years. From that standpoint, how is Molly kind of weaved into the group? So yeah. Anytime you bring newcomers in, whether they're transfers from another program or freshmen, um, you have to bring them up to speed on the culture of your program. So it's something we talk about, again, all the time. It's something, you know, we meet every other week and have a really a team meeting about team dynamics with a sports psychologist on on staff here um, and again it helps when you have people that are older that embrace your culture so that they can pass it along and at that point when you're coming in it's either like well you know I, I can't be a jerk and wreck this you know I mean you want it you you and it feels good I mean our gym feels good when you're there our locker room feels good when you're in it you don't want to mess that up you want to be a part of that and so um, you know I, I'm just really happy with the way that our culture gets passed down from year to year you've got shooters on this team where does uh, Taylor McCabe fit in as far as you know being a, a really good outside threat for you Is she kind of a Dixon kind of kid or yeah, that's a good analogy, Jeff, uh, having her being um, a Melissa Dixon type of a player where she's a knockdown shooter. Yeah, she's probably not going to do too much damage right now penetrating to the hoop because she is a little bit slight in size. Um, and, you know, we've got some work on defense as a freshman. She's got to work on that. But uh, she has a quick release um, just like Melissa did. That's a really good analogy. At one time, uh, Caitlin was 6 for 9 from beyond 30 feet. Who does that? Who keeps track of that? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't keep track of that. But, you know, sometimes she's more open from 30 feet than she is from 20. So. Rebounding and defense were some of the things that, that impacted losses. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see them? I mean, it's, maybe it's really hard to tell in practice, but how do you see them coming along in those two areas? Yeah, and we made a big jump last year in defense. I mean, we jumped up about 100 spots 
um, according to synergy in our defense. So we got better, um, and that's encouraging, but we still have a work, you know, a ways to go. Uh, but at the same time, you all know I'm an offensive coach, and I'm not going to sacrifice my offense for, um, you know, completely for defense. And I want to improve defense. I want to improve rebounding, but I'm not going to do that <clears throat> at the expense of our offense. And so <clears throat> we'll continue to be up-tempo in offense. Um, you know, and that gives your defense more opportunities to work, right, when, you're, when you score the ball so quickly like we do. Um, I see us really focusing on defense in practice, though. I see us competing really hard defensively and them really taking it to heart when they get scored upon. Um, rebounding, we, we, we need to get better uh, on both ends, uh, offensively and defensively. And I think it's great when you have areas that you can work on and you can really identify those areas and let's get better at it. Is it more of a mindset thing, uh, those two factors? Uh... More schematics, uh, what do you look to improve specifically in those two areas? Yeah, last year we tweaked a lot of things in our defense that I think benefited us. Um, we didn't do a lot of that this year, uh, tweaking of our defense, that is. Um, offense, we're just we're trying to make it offensive rebounding just a better mindset. I think we shoot the ball so well sometimes on the offense when you're 20 feet away, you think, well, we're going to make it every time. Well, we don't make it every time, you know, and so we need to get in there and get those second and third opportunities. And it's just a mentality and a discipline that we have to get better at. And we're trying to reward that in practice. You feel like this team's maybe equipped a little bit more to be a better rebounding team to get Sharon Goodman back. Addison O'Grady's a year older now. Um, kind of Warnock and Stolten. Do you think this, this team in general is built to rebound a little bit better? I do, and I think the, the depth at the center position could keep Monica a little more fresher, which will help her in that rebounding area. I think Hannah Stolke is an excellent rebounder. I think Sid is a really good rebounder. Uh, McKenna has, and sometimes she just hasn't gone to the boards, and so we need to make sure she's always going to the boards. A little bit of a tangent here, but... Uh, mm -hmm. The NCAA has changed the, the format of the tournament. Mm -hmm. So if you get to the Sweet 16, you're either going to Washington or Oregon or you're going to South Carolina. Right. Just your thoughts about that, and it's uh, obviously not an optimal um, deal for your fans. No, it's not for the Midwest. I mean, uh, really, and, and here we have, you know, Iowa and I State both ranked in the top ten, and neither one of us, if we make it that far, would have a chance to play in the Midwest, which is kind of sad. Um, so... You know, NCAA is trying this uh, to try to get more neutrality uh, within the, the Sweet 16 because a lot of times those regionals have been right in certain people's backyards anyway. Um, it's not like we've had a bunch uh, in the, you know, right in the Midwest as it is. So I guess it's, it's good uh, that we'll have a neutral place to play those games, a more neutral than what it's been in the past. Do you have that sign that women's basketball is growing, knowing the fact that you can go to neutral areas and still get an audience like that? I hope so. You know, I think women's basketball is really growing in viewership and television, uh, attendance at games. Um, you know, we're seeing it, and I think across the country we're seeing it. So I, I hope that is the case, that we can really draw to those two um, what do you call them? Are they called regional still or not? But those two, you know, Sweet 16 spots. Do you have an update on Ava? Um, I can't talk about Ava because she's not a signed athlete. So I can't speak on it. I'm sorry. No. Do you anticipate red shirting anybody? At this point, we don't, but we haven't made complete decisions on that. Um, but we'll, we'll seek a medical red shirt for Kylie. Um, but we don't know about any other additional red shirts. Has there been any talk at all about maybe a fifth year for any of your, your fourth year kids? Yes, um, we've talked about, we've had those conversations. I'm not really um, ready to, to say who's taking it and who's not yet, but we have had those conversations. How did the, how did the injury to Kylie kind of maybe change things for, for your guard rotation? Uh, because she did play a lot last year. She did. She played a lot for us, and she was really, you know, oftentimes the first perimeter substitution off the bench and so you know that was a, a loss for us and she was looking so good this summer she was playing very very well she put a lot of time into the gym this summer um, so my, my heart just aches for her more than anything else anytime that a player you lose a player to ACL it's just such a it takes away their a lot of their identity a lot of their joy of being here at Iowa and and I'm really feel bad about that for her 
she's doing really well in her recovery, and it does change things. And, you know, all those players are smart. They can count. They see where they sit now, and a lot of them know that it moved them up a spot. With three ACL tears in two years, have you been doing anything different in practice to try to prevent that? Um, you know, we've always done things to try to prevent ACL tears, whether it's in our strength uh, training room, um, you know, and, and strengthening <clears throat> the quads and making sure that they have equal strength between the hamstrings and the quads, also being flexibility. Um, so are we doing anything different? No, but we have always, always worked on trying to maintain the strength and flexibility of our athletes and so that they don't have these kind of injuries. Is there anybody that... Uh we don't know about that might be that, that's made a big jump this year or might be a surprise uh, you know kind of up the, the ladder up the chart wise I think the biggest um, surprises will be Molly because you just don't know her yet and you haven't seen her yet um, I think Hannah Stalky as a freshman um, will really do some big things for us um, I would have said Kylie here uh, in that in that question uh, I think Sid um, has made some good I think Shatia is coming back well from her ACL as well. Do you have a rotation set yet for your first two or three off the bench? Or is that still in progress? Still in progress. We have a closed exhibition on Saturday against DePaul at DePaul, and I think that's going to be really good for us to really try some different things. Um, and so that should be a a lot of fun for us, uh, but we haven't come up with a set rotation yet. And who knows, those things can change too as the year goes on. You said you went to, uh, you, you're going to DePaul this year. Any reason why uh, you. Uh, well, we're not, not playing same. Creighton? Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to explain that? <laughs> a little bad taste in our mouth, and uh, obviously. And, and you know something, DePaul's a great team. They were ranked number one in the country in, in points per game, uh, playing the Big East. Um, and, and I called Jim and, and explained the situation. He was great with it. He totally understood. Uh, we've been doing that a lot of years, and it was just time for something new, and especially after that situation last year. Was it just because of the fact that you played them twice somewhat recently in the NCAA tournament that that is kind of a, yeah. maybe a, a downside of playing them in the beginning of the year? Yeah, I mean, you want to play in the NCAA tournament. You'd really like to play people that are unfamiliar with you and we keep kind of running up against them because they are such a good program. Now it could happen with DePaul again this year. You never know. They were sent to Iowa State last year. Um, so, you know, it, it may not do us that much good, but you're right. We've played them, you know, a couple times here. Uh, back to roster, are you locked in to starting the same five you, you went with last year? At least I'm pretty locked in. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say completely because we don't have to you know open up till november but you know right now i don't see why we wouldn't start that way where does jada fit in jada fits in um at the really we're, we've been trying to play her at the power forward position um we'd like to have her play the three and the four in time but we're you know again with freshmen i don't like to give them so many roles that they have to learn so much because they're learning a lot as it is so Right now, we're kind of focusing on the power forward position for her. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot, you guys. Appreciate it very much. Look forward to working with you guys. Yeah.